Oh my kaku, my name is Sarah Wakana and I did my project on Hawaiian land tenure. So land tenure in Hawaii has gone through a number of different changes over the course of history in Hawaii up until what is known as the overthrow of the Hawaiian Kingdom. Um, land tenure has been under had been under Hawaiian control for centuries. Um, the series of events related to and immediately following the illegal overthrow of the Hawaiian Kingdom led to the unlawful taking of Hawaiian territory, ultimately for the use of U.S. militarization. Um, my project will evaluate land tenure in Hawaii in, in three parts. Um, land tenure under the Aikapu, innovations in land tenure led by Ali'i and military force in Hawaiian and Hawaii under occupation. So society under the Aikapu was highly stratified, hierarchical system dependent upon mana. Um, in the Hawaiian body politic, um, the Ali'i Nui was the head, his Ali'i, the Ali'i class, his Alo Ali'i were the shoulders, um, his right hand was the kahuna, his left hand, the kalaimoku, the statesman, um, so the priests and the statesmen. Um, his feet were the warriors and the farmers and fishermen. And the fingers and toes were the, the commoners that kept the balance. Yeah, um, A new ali'i may come into power by conquest or at the death of the previous ali'i. Um, and he would conduct a kalai aina, which was a redistribution of lands to his alo ali'i, his most um, loyal retainers. Um, each kalai aina was very strategic for the success of the administration. The largest parcels went to um, the most loyal retainers and the lesser portions were given to others so as not to um, have the resources for an uprising against the Ali'i Nui, yet still to establish some alliance or, or obligation. All lands belong to the Ali'i Nui, and under the Ali'i Nui, Aina could not be owned or traded. Instead, Kuleana was distributed to Ali'i, um, and care was maintained by the Makainana. Major land divisions in the, um, during the Aikapu time were the Mokupuni. Um, most of the kingdoms ruled by these Ali'i Nui were um, island kingdoms. Um, sometimes they spanned a few islands, like Maui was known for that. Um, so a Mokupuni is, is the island. Um, within the island, there were Moku districts like Puna, Ka'u, Kona, Kohala, Hamakua, Hilo. Um, within the districts, there were o Okana or Kalana. Uh, which were several ahupua'a. Ahupua'a parcels were usually divided from mountain to the sea. Um, sometimes, there, I mean, there were exceptions. Um, ahupua'a were the most important division to the to the people of Hawaii. They were um, they were able to derive all the resources needed for their survival from their ahupua'a, and it was by the ahupua'a vi division that taxes and tribute were collected um, at the makahiki season. So um, the ali'i in control of the ahupua'a resources usually put a konohiki, a supervisor of lesser rank, in charge of the daily management. Ili were subdivisions of ahupua'a that were inhabited and farmed by maka'ainana for the convenience of the chief. The maka'ainana were not tied to an ali'i, but were loyal to the land that their family maintained. They were not affected by redistribution and were free to come and go as they pleased. Foreign contact and effects, European contact would put Hawaii on the map and introduce many goods and products that the Hawaiians adapted use for, as well as introduced diseases which the people of Hawaii had no immunity to. Kamehameha I used some of these introduced products, namely gunpowder, cannons, muskets, and foreign vessels, as well as foreign advisors to unify the islands. After his death, the Aikapu was never reinstated by Liholiho, Kamehameha II, under pressure from his mothers, Kaahumanu and Keopuolani. Um, the Aikapu was um, the state religion, it was the law, it was intricately woven into every part of everyday culture. So um, this was a huge transition and followed closely just by months by the arrival of the, Protest the first Protestant missionaries from New England. 
innovations led by Ali'i. So no stranger to laws, Hawaiians began using laws to control foreigners in their domain as well as to protect their own authority. Um, in 1839, the Kumu Kanavai, the source of laws or um, constitution, was the first written law that defined the relationship between the Hawaiian classes. Based on Hawaiian custom and traditional structure, it was negotiated through European legal forms. The most important factor spelled out was the legal recognition that the three classes, the Mo'i, the Ali'i, and the Maka'inana, all owned and reserved joint interests in the lands and marine resources of the kingdom. So the Kumu Kanavai, the Constitution of 1840, um, it was basically the same, a little bit, it added a few extra things like a new government structure, um, it made the, the kingdom a constitutional monarchy, um, added an uh, elected representative body um, to serve along with the House of Nobles, the Ali'i, in the legislative branch. Um, the Mahele was developed as a means to address the legal rights that the Mo'i, Ali'i, and Maka'inana had to the lands of the kingdom so that the layers of rights to the land may be separated and defined. Um, the Mahele of 1848 it established the Mo'i, uh, the crown, government, and Ali'i lands. And Ali'i were able to get um, these fee simple titles with payment, so they would pay like a third or pay off the, the government for their share of the land. Foreigners pushed for um, the Mahele. Um, other takes on this Mahele was that Ali'i had accrued large debts to the Westerners in Hawaii, and these local foreigners desired land in either lease or fee in place of the increasing debts. So the Mahele was probably an effort to deal with the demands of foreign settlers and their warships that protected their interests while also trying to protect the interests of the Hawaiian people. Regarding the Kuleana Act of 1850, it is commonly cited that the Maka'inana got the short end of the stick. But it, the fact is that if the Maka'inana did not divide their right out to the land for a freehold title, then their rights to the land still existed in perpetuity. Plantation agriculture in Hawaii had started with large acreage being leased by the Mo'i to foreign settlers and grew as fee simple land titles had become available to foreign settlers. Plantation owners came to control a majority of the kingdom's wealth and rose to prominent and powerful positions in the Hawaiian kingdom government. And as they um, gained these, these positions of power, you know, they tried to manipulate their own best interests. So um, throughout the latter half of the 1800s, um, protecting Hawaiian independence and reviving Hawaiian culture was a definite priority of the Mo'i of those times, um, Kamehameha IV and V, um, Kalakaua. Um, it was a priority for the Ali'i to, to protect Hawaiian independence and um, to revive the, the culture. In 1887, Kalakaua was held at gunpoint, forced to sign a new constitution that um, these armed soldiers had written that demanded he dismiss his cabinet and, um, and greatly limited his authority or the authority of the Mo'i. Um, they call that the Bayonet Constitution. January 17, 1893. Uh, a small group of these same American plantation owners, backed by the U.S. Marines, um, overthrew Lilio Kalani. Uh, she yielded her authority not to the provisional government, but to the U.S. until the time she would be rightfully restored, which she never was. Um, in 1898, the U.S. Congress passed a joint resolution not signed by or agreed to by any Hawaiian government, um, and they quote-unquote annexed Hawaii for use as a mid-Pacific fueling station in the Spanish-American War. And this was just an act of U.S. domestic law. Um, under international law, only a treaty between the two countries could have successfully extinguished the sovereignty of the Hawaiian people. And, and the people of Hawaii actively opposed and, and um, were successful in, in um, opposing previous um, treaties of annexation. 
In 1900, the Organic Act transferred all Hawaii land to U.S. federal government and the territory of Hawaii was established. And then in 1959, the people of Hawaii of all ethnicities, after over 50 years of being second-rate citizens in their own home, with a voice but no vote in U.S. Congress, those people voted for incorporation. And with statehood, Hawaii lands were transferred from the U.S government to the state of Hawaii and they remain under the management of its departments. Do we have one more slide? Oh, apparently I have one more slide. So land tenure in Hawaii has gone through many transitions and in this day is buried under layers of complexities and clouded titles that lose their validity and legality when taken back to the very beginning of the military and government occupation of the Hawaiian Kingdom. The injustices put in place by the occupation has made rights to these lands into a racial issue with the occupier defined who is able to receive these benefits, which is constituted by blood quantum. Programs like Department of Hawaiian Homelands and organizations like Office of Hawaiian Affairs are said to address the rehabilitation of these Hawaiians and support of these native Hawaiian, quote unquote, reconnection to the land. But they're state departments first and are, are not truly for the Hawaiians. Meanwhile, under the state of Hawaii, Department of Land and Natural Resources are sacred places like Mauna Kea continue to be mismanaged for as little as a dollar a year, with other emphasis far more important than the ecological and cultural resources and significance that these places rep represent for the people of Hawaii to whom the rights to the land truly belong. Um, I have here the apology resolution. Um, basically, in 1993, uh, um, the 100-year anniversary of the overthrow um, the United States apologized for all these wrongs done against Hawaii. And then in 2009, um, the U.S. Supreme Court went and um, stripped the public law or the, uh, the apology resolu resolution of any legal findings, any, um, any basis that could be used um, to support Native Hawaiian claims or Hawaiian claims. So um, it's interesting that they went as far to do that. Um, they must feel that that there was some basis and they had to, to um, make sure that it was reiterated that, that no, you may not have your land back. So mahalo for listening. I hope you learned a little bit and thank you.